All right, we're going to talk a little bit more about wood. Um, if anybody didn't get a syllabus and you'd like one for your own, there's some down here. You can get one after class. What else can I tell you? Ah, I dug this out of my drawer, and I thought I'd pass these around. You can observe firsthand close-up failure of wood, what it looks like. These were some pieces that we put in the testing machine. So you can see, get an idea, you know, what a shear failure looks like. This was a, this was a very short piece that was point loaded in the middle, and we'll talk about that, an example of that today, and it, you can see how it fails, what a shear failure looks like. This is a little bit longer piece that failed in, in um, you can see there's a crack down here at the bottom, failed in flexure. This is one that failed, it was loaded like this, and failed in, in compression, so you can see a little bit of crushing, did not buckle, and this is one that we ripped apart in tension. So basically it splits. That's, that's kind of it, but maybe this would be interesting just to observe. And who's sitting back there? When it gets to that back row, get it over to this corner, not that corner. Somehow you guys get it back to either Chiga or Michael in the back, or Chiga, yeah, all right, in the back there. And you make sure you get it. Got it, okay. Now. What else are we going to do today? Um, go through some examples of uh, another analysis example. The, the computer problems, has anybody logged in? Did that work last night? They're good. Excellent. Wonderful. So you should all try that like pretty quickly because I think the first one's due on Monday, right? Wednesday. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. That's right. It was due on Monday. I think on this sheet it says Monday, and I decided, oh, it is a little bit sudden, isn't it? Anyway, but they're very short, the first couple, uh, but I wouldn't put it off. I mean, it's good to make sure you can, that somehow your name didn't get skipped in the, the process and, and that you can log in and get your, your data and everything works. Right? Nice to know it works. Okay, let's go through, I got my thing over there. When we start to do stuff on the board, turn those back up rather than the board lights. Where were we? I think this is, is this, is this where we were the other day? Seven, I think this is the one we ran through the other day. There, there are two um, analyses procedures that we'll look at. In both cases with analysis, uh, you're given the member size. That's the big distinction between analysis and design, right? If you're, if you're given the member size, then you're trying to discover something about its behavior. You're trying to analyze it. You're trying to either find whether it passes or fails. That would be maybe one thing that would be interesting. It could be that, that you're going to assume that it's going to pass but you'll, you'll find the uh, load capacity. That would also be a form of analysis. Um, the one we did yesterday um, was given, given the loading. This is the one we ran through, I guess, that was supposed to, um, yeah, was supposed to simulate like maybe a, a person standing on the center of, say, our friend down here. This, this was supposed to be me in the dark, standing in the center of this, and it does pass. And we figured step one is you've got to find the, the uh, low load in terms of force. There's a load, here's the, the actual loading, 145 pounds, then you've got to find the forces in the beam, the, the, the shear in the moment, okay? So we did that, you can do it with equations or you can do it with the diagrams. Then you plug those in uh, to find the stresses. Here's the flexor stress, M over S. This is the section modulus that comes from um, BD squared over six for a wood section. Or it would also uh, kind of handily come out of these tables, right? This is like from the back of the book or other sources would give that, right? 
you get the you get the stress then you make sure you get the units right this is probably coming in in foot pounds where is it well no it didn't okay this would have been in foot pounds from this equation if you put this in the length in in feet you're going to get foot pounds somewhere you have to convert it into inch pounds by the time you use it in this equation because this this is all going to be the cross sectional dimensions are all in inches so since those are in inches, you've got to make sure you convert this to those, those are inch pounds in. So that comes out in PSI. That's the stress. That's the flexor stress, right? In this little wood, little wood piece that's being passed around, that one right there, that is the stress in the top and bottom fibers, right? That's the stress. Here, turn, turn the lights on a second. In the um, remember this diagram. So this is this is like compressive stress. This is uh, tensile stress down here. This is the bending. This is like on the beam cross section. Here you got the the neutral axis. So what that what that number is describing that 852. That's this right here, 852 uh, PSI, right there at, that, at those fibers. At the center line, it's zero, all right? At the bottom, it goes into tension, but it's also 852. So it's, it's 852 at the top because, it, because that little rectangle is symmetric, or this one is symmetric. So it's, it's going to be the same top and bottom. Um, Let's see, and then we do, okay, you can jump back out, let's go there. Then we do the shear stress. We get that too, it's number two. Which one do you want? Yeah, all right, now you can see it. Here's, this is the, the force, the shear force that comes off the, the shear diagram, right? There it is, that's just in pounds, equals the end reaction usually. And, and uh, then this, this uh, calculates the shear stress, which is the, actually, remember the shear, the pattern of the shear stress? Ooh, I should have done Okay, now turn the lights back on. I keep going back and forth with the lights, so see, you can see this a little better on the, the video is the main reason. This is, the, this is the shear stress distribution, right? Uh, yeah, right, <laughs> FV, and the maximum, is here at the at the neutral axis. So that number, wherever it is, 20.7, that should be this. That's at that point. It's on the rectangular cross section, uh, a parabolic uh, distribution. The the sliding. This is the the horizontal sliding stress, and that's at a maximum at the neutral axis. Out here at the ends, it's actually zero. So where you expect to see cracking is kind of in the middle. It doesn't always happen right at the middle. Be with wood, because you know, you got knot holes in different places, you got a weak spot somewhere. So it might start cracking. The, one, the sample that I actually tested, the fact that the, the end reaction damaged the wood, the, the load was heavy enough it actually crushed the wood here and started a crack. But then you could see, even in that one, the crack tried to get up to where, I mean, the crack moved up to the, the neutral axis um, pretty quickly. But it depends on the grain of the wood and that kind of thing. That's the that's fun with wood. But theoretically, this would be the, the maximum mm, okay. location. OK, and then in terms of analysis, then you, then you um, you check those against the allowables. So these were the two we just calculated, and here are the allowable values. This, this would come out of, in, in the case of the problems you work in here, it's kind of a given. Or in, in practice, you'd, you'd get that value out of that uh, wood code that I had in here the other day. Depending on the species of wood, depending on the conditions of use, you modify it a little bit, but that, that value is, a, is an allowable, how much the, the wood can 
uh, withstand. And you see it is different in, by an order of magnitude, right? Between, in this case, not always, uh, between the, the flexure and the shear. It's much weaker in shear. It's much stronger in flexure, which is a good thing because it has a heavier load on it in flexure. At least this one does. Um, OK, the other procedure that we can look at is uh, where you're looking for the capacity. You're still given, this is still analysis, you're still given the member size, right? We can still have, in fact, I think this, is, this example still uses my, my favorite piece of wood here. But OK, so it didn't fail with whatever I weigh, right? It was safe for 150. How much, what is the capacity of it? If I wanted to know what it really could hold, that would still be an analysis, and I'd have to look for the load. I'd have the member size, I'd have the, the material, the span, everything, the allowable stresses, but I don't, I want to know what the capacity is. So what you do is you start by assuming that the, you're going to push it to the limit. In our other one, we didn't push it to the limit, right? In this one, look, we, we found that for 150 pounds, 852 is way below the limit. It's like less than half of the limit. Well, it's about half of the limit, but so it's nowhere, it's not near the limit. So if we want to push it to the limit, this would be pushing it right to the limit. We're going to set the, the actual stress right equal to the, right up to the allowable. If we made the actual stress more than the allowable, then you'd have problems, right? Then that would not be good. Well, it wouldn't be so bad. Actually, actually, you've got a little bit of, I mean, this is, a, this is an allowable, means it's got a factor of safety on it. So, I mean, if you hit it, if you bump it, it better not fail. You should have, I mean, it's not the sort of thing you like to, to push beyond the limit of safety, but, but there is, there are, there is some, some leeway there. Anyway. Uh, so you, you make that assumption, then you solve these equations. So this is, this is now, this is, we, we did have before the little f in there, right? As a definition of, of uh, stress, little f equals m over, m over s. So now we're putting the big F in there. Uh, we push it right to the allowable, and that way uh, we can calculate I mean, given the size of the wood we have, given the, given the uh, allowable we have, we can find the moment capacity, the heaviest moment that that could carry. Interestingly enough, it's kind of, I mean, that moment capacity is um, regardless of, of the length and the, I mean, the loading conditions and everything. That's like a, you can imagine it, say you had just any moment diagram it would be the peak value for whatever loading or whatever conditions you have. You're not going to go beyond that peak value. So sometimes you can even see tables where they'll, uh, they'll relate this, these two directly. I mean, for, for a given size, they'll tell you what the moment capacity is for, but then it has to, in, in wood, that gets kind of messy. Then you've got to say, yeah, for what loading can, you know, uh, duration of load, what, uh, you know, so it's got to have the type of load in it. It's got to have all these other conditions in it. So it's not, it's not too practical in, in a sense. But, but the, that is a capacity. And, and you can do the same thing for shear. Usually, usually moments going to control. So you'd, you'd uh, find the, the maximum load capacity. This isn't load yet. This is still force in the beam. You'd find the load capacity for uh, the moment, and then you'd check it against shear. It's just, somehow a little easier, uh, maybe a little less likely to get confused. You could solve both of these. I mean, you could solve the maximum shear force, but then you'd have two different loadings, and you'd have to be smart enough to pick the smaller one. It's really pushing it, but you know, you could do that. <laughs> it would be possible to do that. Um, what else do we have to do? Yeah, then you back, okay, once you get this, then you use this to, to find the forces. In the end, we're not doing this now. Eventually, um, we will look at uh, deflection later in the semester. Eventually, you do those other things. There are, um, we must have talked about this last semester. Well, I'll talk about it in a minute. When we talk about design, we'll talk about the, the famous three S's. Let's go ahead, let's finish this first. 
before I get too distracted. OK, so here we go. Span six feet. There, there it is. Before you, you can see it, the span is six feet, more or less. The section is a two by four, which is really one and a half by three and a half. The um, safe, allowable, factored um, flexure stress is 1,800 psi. So this is the same, these are all the same numbers as we had. What we, what's different is we want to know what the capacity is. Now we want to know what the maximum load is. OK, so we already have, have this number. This is for the, the, the um, one and a half by, th by three and a half. It would give you that section modulus. Now we want to calculate this moment capacity. So you take this uh, uh, allowable flexure stress with that, F times S, and it gives you this. This is going to come out in inch pounds, right? Because this is inches, this is inches, and pounds. So you get inch pounds. Going backwards now to get uh, the force with, from the moment diagram or from the, the equations with length in them, because length is in feet, you're going to have to convert this to foot pounds. So you take this uh, 5,508, divide it by 12, and it would be uh, apparently 459 foot pounds. So there are the foot pounds. Now, those, this, that's this number, right? This is the moment. And that, for a point load, if we're talking, now here's where you have to relate it to the, that moment is just the moment capacity. But now you have to relate it to uh, the, the way that moment is put on the beam, whether it's a, I mean, I could, you know, I don't know if I can do this, I could lie down, right? Then I'd be a distributor. I'm about six feet, well, I'm not quite six feet, but well, close enough. Um, that would give me a distributed load. Then the equation would be WL squared over eight, right? You'd get a different, that you'd calculate W, you'd have a different total load, probably. The most severe load is the point load in the middle, PL over 4. So that, I mean, in terms of, of uh, that'll be the lowest load to get that, to get that moment, right? If I, if I had another load case, maybe I'd have a load case way over here. Whoa! Okay, something like this. Okay, that would be a different, equa different moment equation. So all those would result in different, you'd find different Ps. But if we're talking about the, so you have to know what, your, how, what the loading condition is, right? Point load in the center is PL over 4. Then you solve for P. You put this moment in, uh, 4 over L, uh, chug through the numbers. This is all in feet now. Or this is in feet. This is a constant. This is in feet. And you get 306 pounds. So does that sound right? Yeah, it sounds right. I mean, it was. It seemed before it was over designed almost by a factor of two, right? For 150. So now, if we want to find the real capacity of it, you'd think it's probably about double that load. So 300 and something pounds, 306 <clears throat> looks like the capacity. Now, that's the moment capacity. We still have to, have to check shear, I hope. Yeah, right, good. Um, this. I can go ahead and, and calculate the shear. If I, if I assume that the moment, the, that, that load is determined by the moment, then I essentially check the shear. So I'd come through here, <coughs> and I could check it uh, like this. Calculate the shear. This is now the given load, 306 pounds. This would be the shear force. That's the end reaction, about half of it. Well, half of that, right? We put that in here, <coughs> 3 halves V over A. And that gives us uh, 43.7 PSI, which is way less than 180. So it's safe. Boom. You'd be all done. Um, usually, that's the scenario. And the reason that's usually the scenario is because usually beams are longer. You try to, you know, just the shape of architecture, uh, rooms are usually longer than, you know, six feet wide, or even at six feet the moment control, right, for the uh, aspect ratio. If you, if you have very short loads, uh, very short spans, rather, with heavier loads, then, then, it, then you can get a condition where shear will control. But that's not, that's not very common. And maybe you could, you could kind of 
suspect it in advance if you had a, a real heavy load in a short span. Or just a, yeah, yeah, or just a short span. Let's see. For example, we could try this. If I, instead of, instead of the six-foot span, if we, re, if we wanted to rework this exact same thing for uh, a one-foot span, mm, which is sort of like this. This is pretty close. So we'll get rid of our six-foot span. And now we'll have a one-foot span. Let's see. Well, what do you think? Is it going to carry more or less load? It's got to carry more, right? It's certainly in flexure it's going to carry more because as you move the, the end reactions uh, closer together, uh, it's less and less likely to bend, right? So if we go through this, I'll see what we've changed. Probably not too much. Um, now we've got a span L equals one foot. Uh, so when we go to figure the moment, the moment capacity is still the same. This is, a, this is the same. I've still got a two by four, right? There it is. You can see it. It's changed color. It actually, to be honest, this is not Douglas fir. This is not Douglas fir. This looks some, this is some sort of trashy piece of wood that I pulled out of the garbage. Spruce, pine, something, I don't know. Might be white pine, but it's not a very good piece. But we'll pretend it is. We'll pretend it has this same stress capacity. So, so this all remains the same. It has the same moment capacity. But now the moment uh, is coming from a, uh, a different length. So when we do the PL uh, over 4, or there we calculate PM, right? P equals, what was it? M4 over, oops, M4 over L, right? So now we'll have the, what was it? Not 306, four, 459, 459, which is in foot pounds, times four, the constant over one, one foot. So those cancel out, and you get four times four, what do you get? 1836, which is in pounds, right? So, wow, okay, yeah, that, I should say that went up. We could put half the class on. That's more than my car weighs, I think, <laughs> certainly. All right, so that would, that could stand on it right in the center there. But now if you check shear, um, Let's have a look what that would be like. Whoops, wrong direction. Now we want to do the shear, P over 2. So what's that? 918, maybe, pounds. And if we do uh, the shear stress, um, 3 halves. V over A. A is still the same. We've only changed V. So, oops, 1.5 times 918 over 5.25, I think. What is it? Whoa, man, we really outdid it. 262? And what was the limit? Mm -hmm. So here, here the shear actually controls, so it fails. It would, it, that means that it's not going, the capacity, if you're interested in the capacity, the capacity for that little short one's not really uh, 1836. You've got to go back and figure the capacity based on, uh, based on this, right? You've got to set this equation equal to 180 and then solve and then solve for V maybe we should do that what would that be uh, that would give us uh, V 
v equals 180 times uh, 2 thirds times a, right? No. V, yeah, times a. Oops. 5.25. What is it? 630. 630. Okay, and then P is equal to V times 2. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, what's all this? That tripped me up. Um, v times 2, which would be then 1260. Hmm. Oh, that's still a lot. But not 18, not 18 whatever, right? So that would be that would be the actual capacity for that one foot piece. But usually, but you can see that's, I mean, it's got to, you got to get short. You've got to, if I had had it two feet long, I think moment still would have controlled. So you really, I mean, it's really kind of an extreme in some, but, but sometimes it, it also occur, shear could control also in another situation. If you had, uh, well, let me just do it like this. If I had, had the load not not in the center but over toward the edges. Say I had a regular beam, but I but I had for some reason it was heavily loaded at the edges for whatever reason. Maybe maybe it could be a framing problem where there was this piece and another beam tied into it. So you had a real heavy point load close to the reaction. That wouldn't cause too too large a moment, but the end reaction would be huge, right? So those are the those are cases where for wood it would it would very likely fail in in shear. You'd have to you'd have to check it in shear. Uh, okay, turn those back off. Let's see. I think that's probably enough said about analysis. Oop, is that one the design? Yeah, design. Okay, here we are. Let's look at design now. This scenario is maybe more interesting. Uh, here you're looking for the size of the member. You have to, you have to pick the size of the member. Uh, one approach to this, and this sometimes is not such a, it, although it sounds just really primitive, it might not be so bad because sometimes you don't have so many choices. Uh, you could just guess one. You could say, okay, I have to design uh, <laughs> a member to span six feet and and um, carry 150 pounds or something, I don't know. Uh, you could just guess. You could say, well, how about a two by six? And you could try a two by six. And you could say, wow, two by six, that was way over designed. I guess I could do it with a two by four. I mean, those are basically the only choices. What else are you going to do it with? There's nothing smaller. So sometimes you can just guess uh, and then do the analysis in design. You can always, you can always do that if you're totally lost for uh, how to proceed, you can guess the size and then just analyze it. Because analyzing it's pretty easy. That was straightforward. So as long as you can analyze it and you've got enough time to keep guessing. But think, keep guessing could be, you know, if you're talking about a longer span and maybe there are more possibilities. I mean, it could be a 2 by 12, it could be a, a 2 by 10, it could be a 2 by 6. I mean, you don't want to work it three times. It would be faster just to do it once and get it, get it uh, right. So to do that, um, you have to start, you're given the loads now and the wood and the span, but what you're searching for is the member size. So you're given everything except the member. That means you can go ahead and, and build the shear and moment diagram. You can get the, get the uh, forces, uh, get the stresses because you're given the, ooh, wait a minute, yeah, allowable stresses. Yeah, you can get the allowable stresses uh, out of the tables or given to you in the problem or I mean, you might consider them almost as a given. Uh, then you've got to solve, you know, given these stresses and given this, this uh, moment here, then you've got to solve for S, the section modulus. So again, again, you're assuming by, by putting this allowable value that you're stressing it to the limit. If, you, if, you, if this gives you a section modulus, say that if the answer came out to be 7.56, if the answer came out to be 7.56 and you used a 2 by 6, that thing would be stressed to the limit. That would be full capacity. Usually you're not at full capacity because there are just so many sizes. You usually kind of fall between a couple sizes. And you've got to pick, 
you know, maybe it came out to be 8. Well, if it came out to be 8, then you'd look over here and say, oh, no, that, that would be too small. I'd have to go this one. And then it would be, you know, very comfortable 2 by 8. It would be stronger than you need, but it, the next one down's not strong enough. Uh, so, right, you choose, you'd choose a section. If you're being very fussy, and in wood, you don't have to really be quite so fussy because wood doesn't weigh so much. Uh, you'd revise your, see up here somewhere you had a load, but you didn't know what the dead load was. And once you choose a section, you might revise that dead load. Uh, in the problems we do in here, I don't think we'll do that. There's no need to, to get quite that detail. In wood in general, you don't, I mean, you usually kind of throw in some guess up there and it's probably close enough because there's not that much variation. The difference in weight between a, a 2 by 8 and a 2 by 12 is not that, usually not that critical. Uh, in other, th other materials, steel and concrete, it might make, then, then you would have to worry about that a little bit more. Um, okay, and then now, now we've sized it, right? We've got the size, actually right there we got the size. Here we double checked and got the size. Then you check it again, like we just did in the analysis. You, you rather than redesign it for shear and get a different size, you've already got a size, then just check it for shear and, and hopefully it'll pass. And it usually does. And if it doesn't pass, these are some things. Oh yeah, we didn't mention, I should have mentioned this. In wood, actually by the code, and I don't, I don't know that Engels says it in here, but by the code, um, and in, in truth, in reality, it's not, it's not that the code's making it up, it, it actually is like this. When, if the, for shear stress, if you're worried primarily about a splitting horizontally and you've got a heavy load here, well, the reaction is, is reacting. That means these fibers right at the end are squeezed vertically together, right? They're being, because, the, because the reaction's here. If I put a load here, the reaction's, the reaction's pushing up, then it actually compresses these fibers. So it's not quite so likely that it'll really, the, the forces, the forces primary forces are coming up like this and then eventually bend over. And, and it takes them, they come up and bend at about 45 degrees before they come over. So at about D distance away, this area is not too likely to fail horizontally because it's being compressed so much. It's got the, the compressive load. So if you really want to sharpen your pencil, you could go D distance away. So you'll see that sometimes in, I don't know, in tables. I don't know where you might see it. Or if you were in a, in a case where it just barely failed, you could, you could still justify and be within the, I mean, um, it, that's what's known as sharpening your pencil, right? You could, you could uh, redo it, calculate the, the shear at, at D distance from the support, and if it passed then, then that, that meets the code, actually. Um, it's just a little bit extra work. Or if it still fails, then you've got to redesign the section by shear. That would be, you know, if the shear were actually controlling the design, you'd have to choose it by, sh by, choose it by the area. And it would have to meet both the area and the section modulus requirements. Okay, so an example of that would be, say we have, uh, oh, a distributed load. A whole different example, right? Look at this. Uh, this is probably some trashier wood. That, actually, that's still not too bad. 1,000 thousand PSI is better than a lot of wood. So maybe that's, maybe that's a nice number, number two or maybe even a number one spruce or something. Uh, shear stress uh, capacity. The span is 12 feet. It's dead load and live load, evenly distributed. Um, at 80 pounds per linear foot. So this is maybe a floor joist. A floor joist, if it were, <clears throat> if the floor joist were two feet on center, then that would be uh, 40 pounds per square foot, right? Which is about what, that's a res typical residential load. Uh, 40 PSF, 40 pounds per square foot. That's uh, a pretty common live load. Uh, I don't know, maybe to include the dead load and some other loads, maybe they're really 18 inches on center or something. But this, is, this sounds like a floor joist. Um, 
the end reaction, uh, let's see, this would be um, half of this. So uh, half of 80 is 40 times 12 is 480. So there's the end reaction. Okay, that's half, you know, assuming it splits evenly both directions. That's be 480, that's 480. So here from 480 down to uh, the center line gives a triangle with an area of 1440. And that value then is the peak moment. You could do the same things. Um, this is WL over 2, right? And this is WL squared over 8 by equations, which you could also do. So you get those. At any rate, you get the shear in the moment, and then you plug them into these equations, right? This is, this is written in terms of stress. Here it's written, we're going to solve for uh, Sx. The moment, here's the moment that we just got. That's in foot pounds, right? That was in foot pounds. This converts it to inches. This is in PSI. So this comes out in inches, 1728. So then you take that 1728 back to your table, and you go down here, no, 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 yes. You've got to find one that, that has that capacity, that size, that, that value, or greater. So this one would not be, that's too small. 21 is, is plenty big. So you'd have to go with this, a 2 by 10. 2 by 10 has an area of 1388. Eventually, we use that for the deflection. Uh, oops, went the wrong way. OK, so that's what, it, that's what we did here. 21.39, that's from the 2 by 10. That passes. Uh, it has an area of uh, 1388. We use that down in this equation. So now we're just going to check it, <coughs> check it for the shear. So we've already, we're kind of assuming that the, the 2 by 10 is going to work, which is probably pretty safe. Uh, but you better, you, you want to check it anyway. Uh, there's the calculation of the shear stress then. There's the end reaction, the area, uh, 51, and that's plenty safe. So 5187 is way less than 100. So that's, that's good. <coughs> and then these other two, I put up there just so, I mean, so you're aware that that's not really the end of the, quite the end of the problem. You would still go, go on and, and uh, check the deflection and bearing and that kind of thing. Here, turn these on a minute. Uh, because this is, they relate to these, remember we did this once before by, de by design. For <laughs> these, that wasn't too, too good. Design for strength, uh, stability, and serviceability. <laughs> Surf, uh, it must have an E in it, huh? Uh, you know, let's see. I'm not too good at spelling. That might be right. Uh, strength, stability, serviceability. We, what we've done so far was certainly strength, right? We've been looking at capacity, load, stress, that's strength. Stability we've looked at kind of in a, in a sideways uh, way. Stability for these wood beams, the way they'd be unstable. Oh, oh shoot, I forgot to bring that. Ah, now I remember why I wanted that other piece. Um, well, if this were a deep, this is really not deep enough to be unstable. If it were quite a bit deeper, when you'd load it, there'd be a possibility that it would warp out sideways. You, with a, I, I couldn't just pu push it and make it do that either. But you could do that. Uh, what I meant to bring in here was a ruler. Uh, if you had something on the scale of a wooden ruler, right, a yardstick, um, that you can't, you know when you load, a, if you try to flex a yardstick, if you flex it flat, then it just flexes. If you turn it up on the edge and flex it, it'll bow out sideways, right? You got this image? That's... That stability, that bowing out sideways, is a lack of stability. That's a stability failure. And in, in wood, that is accounted for 
uh, when, you, when you figure out this thing, this allowable stress. And uh, we're not going, that's a little bit more of a calculation, but it's, um, there's some equations that do that that then become a factor that are multiplied on there. So that, that's also done. I mean, we've done this and we've done this. We sort of, not going to do that, but that's what that is. Serviceability has to do with the, the um, uh, usage of it, and that would be this, this deflection primarily. That's serviceability for beams. If it deflected too much, it, wouldn't, it would still have the strength. Uh, it might be stable, but it wouldn't be serviceable. It would, it would um, it'd have a problem in terms of serviceability. Um, now, let me see. It seems like there was one other thing I was going to do. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We could do one other, one other kind of design. Um, this, in this one, we picked the section um, from the table, right? Another scenario would be that you're given, because it's a rec rectangular, maybe you already know the, the depth and you want to know how thick it is, or you might know the thickness and want to know how deep it is, you know, one or the other. You'd know one dimension and not know the other one. And, and uh, that we could look at real quickly. Um, looking back at that, that first example, I guess, my... Um, This thing, right? Let me see. Let's go back because these numbers are up here, I think. I don't know if we actually need these numbers. Back, back, back. This, this thing. What if I wanted to design that? If I had that load, and, and I know this, is, this was too strong, right, to carry the 150 pounds, what if I wanted to get a size that was, <clears throat> that was just big enough to carry the 150 pounds? Right, so then I'd have um, the the load would be given the 150. Oh, so no, I better do. I'll take the same numbers. I get 145 somehow. I don't know why I picked 145. Oh yeah, I do, but <laughs> whatever. I've certainly gained white weight since then. 145 pounds, and that gave a a moment at the center line of whatever that says there, 217, right? Okay, which is in foot pounds, which was maybe well. That, that's all right. Let's leave it like that. Now, if we want to get, um, let's see, this we know. So what don't we know? That one. That's the one we don't know. So you have to solve. You have to solve this in terms of design you have to solve uh, that equation, right? What well, was, um, I always have to write that. I think it's just F, M, MF, right? But it would be, uh, F equals M over S. That's how I always remember these things. So this would be, oh, see, I was going to do it wrong. That's the way it is. This would be M. Uh, over F B, right? So we'd have 21.5. This is though in foot pounds, right? So we want to multiply that by 12, uh, which is 12 inch inches per foot, right? And that gets rid of the the feet. And then we say 1,800 pounds per inch squared, and that gets rid of, no, no, that comes up to, up to the top and gives you inches cubed, and the pounds cancel. Okay, so that is, what do you get? 1.45, ooh, great. 1.45 inches cubed. That's... That's the section modules. Now, if you went back, I mean, you're not going. This is one that you're not going to find in a table exactly. If we wanted to say, 
uh, let's use that same uh, thickness, let's say uh, D equals uh, 3.5 inches, and then we can find, find B, how thick it is, the thickness of it. So we're going to say it's, you know, 3.5 by B, and that, this, right, is equal to uh, the SX BD cubed over 6. So if we take D as, um, mm, well, let me just rewrite it. If we take, solve it for B, right, oh, sorry, B, then we've got uh, 1.45 inches cubed. We've got the D cubed, oh, cubed, where'd that come from? Who said that? Squared. Um, so you got the B, D squared, <laughs> 3.5 squared. And the 6 comes up here, right? OK. Which equals then 0 0.71 inches. So that's about, actually 0.75 would be a 1 by. So it's essentially uh, a 1 by 4, four a 1 by 4, which would be which would be about half of this, right? It would be, I mean, this is a two by, a one by is a, about half. So it would be half of, half of this. So then you have to think, yeah, right, this was, this carried, had a capacity of a little over 300, right? So, and I was only putting about uh, 150, about half, in other words, it was twice as strong as it needed to be. I could, I could cut it in half this way and it's half as strong, which is <laughs> not exactly uh, a revelation, maybe, but, okay, so if I cut it in half this way, it's half as strong as if it were twice as thick, right? Now, what if I cut it in half this way? Woo, man, you knew I was going to ask that, didn't you? It'd be a quarter the strength, not half the strength. If I cut the, if I have a two by two, you know, instead of a one by four, if I have a two by two, then, then this dimension's changing. This one's squared. So I've cut the square in half. Half of the half squared would be, uh, uh, I, well, let's say, yeah, a fourth. Is that what you said? A fourth. So half, <laughs> half squared is a fourth. So uh, it would be as a fourth as strong, not half as strong, if I cut it that way. Think about that. <laughs> All right, so have a look at the problems online. Have a good weekend.